gun advocate have been telling me for months now that I don't know what it's like to shoot a gun and that I therefore have no business expressing any opinion on guns. I disagree with that premise, but as you may have seen on the show last night, I now know exactly what it's like to shoot an AR-15 assault rifle. And for that matter, a Browning M2 machine gun. Both of which, astonishingly, are completely legal. Uh, I can tell you that none of that has changed my opinion on guns. If anything, it's made it stronger. Talk about a gun culture in this country as if gang members and duck hunters are all somehow part of the same tribe. That's like saying NASCAR drivers and drunk drivers are all part of car culture. The NRA wants armed guards in every school in America. Others say teachers should be allowed to carry concealed weapons. Will it make America's kids safer? I can't think of a better person to ask than Michelle Rhee. She's had a lot to say about all forms of education. The former school's chancellor, Washington, D.C., is out with a new book, Radical, Fighting to Put Students First. Welcome to you. Thanks for having me. Just off the top, let's discuss this issue of safety, because obviously if the kids aren't safe, the rest of it is kind of superfluous. What is your view about all the various views put forward about how to make kids safer in schools with the gun debate? Well, you're absolutely right that it is of preeminent importance that we make sure that kids are in a safe and secure environment in our schools. We have to we have to ensure that that's happening. Um, I think part of the problem with the dialogue that's happening today is that it's very sort of polarized to mm. these extremes, right? So let's let's arm everyone, the mm. teachers, the kids, uh, you know, versus versus not. And I think that um, instead of, 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 of sort of polarizing the debate, we have to have have a very balanced conversation. Um, having armed people in schools doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to have better outcomes. In the Columbine mm -hmm. tragedy, there were armed guards. Virginia actually. Tech had a, a lot of armed people around. That's right, and it didn't stop that from happening. So that's not going to solve all of our problems, and and that's Do why. Do you like the idea of guns around? children Absolutely generally. Absolutely not. So I, I, I interviewed, I didn't interview them actually, I met them, but um, it wasn't aired. It was two young female teachers in Texas, in Houston, both of whom wanted to have a concealed carry permit for themselves because they felt they needed one for personal safety, but they hated the idea of any guns in the school. Yeah. They're in an elementary school. Well, you know, my organization, Students First, is not a, a, a gun control organization. No. But what I can say, you know, as a parent, uh, is that it, it does make me nervous. The idea of having guns in classrooms mm. where kids could potentially access them is something that we've really got to think about. Let's turn to, to the book, uh, Radical, Fighting to Put Students First. I mean, it shouldn't be that radical, should it? But to many people it is. I got some statistics. I remember the opening of Newsroom, the HBO uh, drama series uh, about cable news, obviously. And there was Will McAvoy, the, the anchor, uh, read, reading off at a, a lecture in front of students this sort of shocking statistics of where America is now mm -hmm. in many places. Um, this is based on a 2009 study, 25th in math, 17th in science, 14th in reading. I mean, for the supposed great superpower of the world, these are shameful statistics. Ahead of the US in almost every category, China, Korea, Japan, much of Northern Europe. Um, it, something has to be done, doesn't it? Absolutely. In fact, it's not just China and Korea. Um, it, you know, we're 25th in math, and countries like uh, Hungary mm -hmm. uh, and Slovakia are ahead of us. That that is that is a significant problem, uh, and I think that people are not realizing that we are falling further and further behind in this way. And so, the fact that, for example, education wasn't a primary issue in the presidential debate, mm -hmm. I think, is extraordinarily problematic mm -hmm. because I, I realize that. The the focus is on the economy and jobs, but we're not going to regain our position in the global marketplace until we fix our public well, everything education. Everything stems from education. Right. And I hear the president talking about it as being a priority, but I don't see a lot of evidence of it being a priority. Well, it certainly wasn't in the presidential campaign. No. You did not hear the, the candidates really talking about the education policy issues. Uh, and I think that was problematic. What do you want to see done? I mean, putting students first sounds a great idea until you have to somehow, you've got 120,000 schools in America. Right. What are the overview bullet points you would like to see happen which could radically change America's education system to start making it more competitive? So there are three primary things that we focus on at Students First. The first one is making sure that there's a highly effective teacher in front of every child every single day. The second area is... Have you got to pay them more to get that kind of teacher? Well, 
Look, teachers don't go into the profession because of the money. But, but I think too many of them may leave if they feel disincentivized. That is right? exactly right. Teachers today, even though they have one of the most important and hardest jobs in the country, do not feel recognized and reward for the work, rewarded for the work that they're doing every day. Um, you know, I was talking to my husband, who is a former basketball player, professional basketball player, and I said, you know, when you think about it, it's it's really crazy that we live in a society where basketball players get paid twelve million dollars mm -hmm. a year for dribbling a ball around the court. Mm -hmm. I don't really know. And what, he was a good dribbler, to be he, fair. He was, but, but, but he wasn't adding a whole lot of value no. to society. Meanwhile, we should be paying the highest performing teachers in this country $12 million because they are impacting the future. Of I our totally nation. agree with that. Second point? Second point is we've got to empower parents with information mm -hmm. and with choices so that no family ever is in a situation where they feel like they're trapped in a failing school. And the third is we have to focus on where the dollars are being spent. Mm -hmm. We are spending more money per kid than almost any other country internationally, and yet our results have remained relatively stagnant. Yeah. So a lot of money is clearly being wasted. Oh, and it's absolutely. got to be sorted out. It's a great book, Radical, Find to Put Students First. I couldn't wish for more. I've got four kids. I want them all to read it, and they're all the teachers all to read it. Absolutely. Nice to see you. Thank you. Be sure read. Tomorrow, the man who predicted a landslide victory for Mitt Romney. Oops. Dick Morris has left Fox News and will sit down with me tomorrow night exclusively. I can't wait for this. And we'll be right back. <laughs>